day. I'm Alan Bollard. I'm the Executive Director of the APEC Secretariat and I'm here in Singapore. Can't be with you, I'm afraid, but very keen to have the opportunity to talk to you for this symposium today. APEC is 25 years old this year and it's had some very major achievements. One way of looking at that is to say, well, it's helped probably a quarter of a billion people come out of poverty in the APEC region. That's very significant. It's going to keep working on how we can improve welfare into the future as well. But we know this area is getting more complex. And one of the reasons it's getting more complex is that growth and environmental issues are coming to the front much more. And maybe the biggest environmental issue is this whole question of climate and climate change. It's of course not new. And back in 2007, APEC leaders set out a declaration, it was on climate change, energy security and clean development and they set a goal which was for us in the APEC region to try to reduce energy intensity by 25% by 2030. Well the years have moved on since then and a couple of years later in 2010 in Japan, APEC leaders again meeting, set out a new strategy for growth and one of the things they were talking about was not just more growth, but better growth and particularly sustainable growth. And a year after that meeting, they increased that energy intensity target. They tried to double it. Uh, just this year, we've had energy ministers meeting in China and they've set their own target of trying to see APEC economies double the share of renewables in energy production. So there's a lot of things going on, but we know this whole area of climate change is a very difficult one for APEC. It's difficult because a lot of what we do is trying to increase economic growth, increase welfare, but some of the story on climate change is about mitigation and restraint and improvement in the environment, and that's a little bit different for us. Um, it's a complex phenomenon, you all know it, operates and impacts in quite complicated ways. And in addition, it um, is very hard, of course, to model and to measure and to predict. And then, of course, it runs across a whole lot of APEC interests and interest groups in quite complicated ways as well. So we know that APEC leaders in a couple of weeks are going to meet again in Beijing they'll be interested in reviewing progress, they'll want to see progress in this area. But of course nothing happens just from leaders meetings and making declarations. It only happens when the technical work can be done around APEC. Uh, right at the moment we're aware that there's climate change projects going on in our APEC energy working group, in our agricultural cooperation technology working group, in our tourism working group, in our transportation working group. And um, actually our Oceans and Fisheries Working Group is shortly going to be holding a workshop on the impacts of climate change on oceans and fisheries in APEC. Uh, I know that another of our working groups, the Emergency Preparedness Working Group, is very closely connected with the APEC Climate Centre on workshops and capacity building generally. Well, we're very pleased to see today's symposium going ahead, the symposium on climate extremes and hydrological disasters. We want to pass on our congratulations to the organisers, the APEC Climate Centre and the Nanjing University of Information Science and Technology. I'm sorry we can't be there today, but we at the Secretariat would like to see the results of what comes out of this meeting. We congratulate you on running it and wish you good luck for this proceeding. Thank you.